Monk, do you want to show Vice how good you are? Sit, please. Bang, bang. Yeah, you did it. There it is. He's pro. Hi, I'm Jessica Kozlo from the restaurant Squirrel in Silver Lake, and today we're gonna make a raspberry jam stuffed French toast. Well, the first part is making the jam, so uh, I don't know how many of you are gonna actually make jam, um, but I'm praying, you know, Saturday morning you wake up and you have purpose, you're gonna make some jam. I come from a pastry background. It's really important for me to have all of the measurements be by grams and kilograms. I don't use cups with the jams. In this case, I have whatever berries I had on hand. It is simply raspberries. I weighed it, it was 1.23 kilograms. I multiplied that by 0.67, and I got this number, which is 824 grams of sugar. I also did the same thing. I took 1.23 kilograms, and I multiplied it by 0.024 to get the weight of the lemon juice. Alcohol, I put it at the end. For this one, we're gonna use raspberry brandy, and it's about a quarter of a cup. Add a little kick. The French toast is made with six eggs, half a cup of cream, a tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna take some brioche. We're gonna stuff the brioche with uh, the jam. We'll top it with a powdered sugar, whipped creme fraiche, and more jam. A little lemon juice, a little fleur de sal, and uh, it's breakfast. The first step is taking these raspberries and you have two choices. One is if you're feeling really aggressive and you're having a bad day, you can macerate them with your hands. It gives a nice texture to the jam and it probably will make you feel better. The other way to do it is to put it in a Roboku or Cuisinart and just blend it loosely so some of it is chunky, some of it is thinner, and that way you've got um, texture in your jam. And then I'm gonna mix the sugar and berries and lemon juice in over at the copper pot. I might mix the lemon juice in with the berries because I don't want it to react with the copper. Sugar. Now we're gonna add the berries and lemon juice. I'm gonna mix it up. This jam won't take that long. It'll probably take about 10, 15 minutes. I don't have the heat on yet. I just had the berries uh, basically macerating with the sugar. It's at this point where the sugar starts to kind of bond with, with the fruit and it's starting to release all of its water. I might take out my thermometer and what I'll do is I'll check the bottom of the pot. I know that sounds crazy, but I actually put the thermometer at the base because jam basically um, is done around 217 to 221 degrees. I like to take the spatula and really like push at the bottom because obviously all of your heat source is right at the bottom. So like that is the hottest point at which your jam is being cooked. You're already starting to see like foam and scum. That's basically all like the hairs from the berries and all like the schmutz and dirt. The goal is when you see kind of that foam, get it to the side and you're gonna skim it off. Does it change the taste of your jam? No, but is there a lack of finesse? Yes. The cool thing about this jam right now is it's starting to um, form a skin on the surface. That to me is showing me that I'm close to it being done. And this has been, by the way, like five minutes. This is like super quick jam. So right now my pot is at 214, 213.8. So I'm close, I'm getting there. So this is like loose skin. You're, I mean, we're going for like Cindy Crawford in the 80s, like real woman, voluptuous, like have a moment. It's, and she's getting there. She's almost your perfect woman. <laughs> it's good. So I'm gonna put about a quarter cup of this stuff in. And when we put alcohol in, we're putting more liquid back in, so I'm gonna have to cook it off for like another minute. So I'm gonna take a small plate out of the freezer. I'm gonna put a dollop of this jam on the frozen plate. And I'm gonna put it back into the freezer. So what that does is I'll be able to tell if it's done. If I run my finger through it in about a minute, it should part like the Red Sea and it should furrow like a brow. All right, I'm ready to take the plate out. Oh yeah, there it is. 
See that furrow? And it actually just parted straight that way. So it's done. So our jam is done. We're gonna take some brioche. We're gonna stuff the brioche with uh, the jam. Uh, and then we're gonna make a custard. Custard is six eggs. I have the whisk attachment on, on my KitchenAid. All right, so that's six eggs, half a cup of cream, a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and then you whisk this. But I really want it to be fully incorporated. When I pull the whisk away, it looks like everything's been married together. A junto. So this is brioche, it's a nice eggy loaf. And when I cut, I'm really generous. Like I'll probably get maybe like five French toasts out of this because I make sure to do, go like an inch and a half thick. You gotta get jam in there and you gotta get custard in there. Don't be afraid. And I'm gonna put a slit right in the side. When I do the cut, I kinda go two thirds of the way down. Don't go out the other side because if you go out the other side, your jam will go out the other side. You're trying to keep it in. From the top, just drop it in, squeeze it. And there you go, you got your jam in there. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my skillet really hot with, a, with butter in it. And I'm not shy of butter. I also have my oven on 400 degrees because the first part of the French toast is gonna be up here on the skillet and the second part's gonna be in the oven baking. So now I'm gonna take my um, pieces of French toast and I'm gonna really dunk them. I'm gonna on both sides, like one, two. To the point where if I squeeze it, check it out, I'm gonna see like, you know, it's gonna come out of its pores. I'm gonna drop these guys in. I dropped the first one, and the second one's gonna go down. See that? That's looking good to me. Star cross levers down there. Now I'm gonna set my timer for Let's check in on it in seven minutes. And these, these bad boys are done. It smells like French toast, that real traditional French toast smell, except the difference is you've got this like amazing crust and really kind of soft inside. So to finish it off, I'm gonna take powdered sugar, just like, you know, be friendly with it. I've got hot water, so I can make a nice quenelle of creme fraiche dollop on top. I'm gonna take some more jam, and I'm just gonna spoon feed it over the top of it. A little squeeze of lemon, fleur de sol, and you're done. That is breakfast. <laughs> Should we dig in? I'm gonna just get right into the center because that's what I want. That creme fraiche and that jam. Uh, I might need to take a smaller bite than this, maybe not. Mm. That was so good. I got like the tartness from the jam. It's just like molten lava on the inside. Thank you for watching my how-to. I hope you make this at home and click on the bubble for the recipe. Cheers. Not sharing. Not sharing. <laughs>